Hey guys, uh, I just wanted to make a quick progress video to show the state of Teemo, which is the AVR microcontroller based handheld game console that I've been working on for a little while. Um, so let's get down to it. So right here is sort of the, uh, the prototype testing platform layout that I've got hooked up for the moment and um, so most of the uh, most of the hardware that's going to be in the in the end device is here uh, minus the sound hardware so it's silent right at the moment um, but I got the display board done this is based on uh, 74 HC 595 shift registers and they're directly driving these uh, these LED matrices so we've got a, a 16 by 16 display here um, here's the main control board, which uh, which has our, our TNC 2.0, runs everything. That's the microcontroller. Um, uh, data out to the display board, and then just some other little connections. We've got the boost regulator here to pop up the 3.5 volts from the batteries to 5 for the microcontroller. And then uh, the wires just sort of come out here to this little control pad that I've got rigged up for, for testing. Um, I'm not sure if this is the actual layout I'm going to use for the, the controls when it's all said and done, uh, but for the moment this gives me a, a sort of platform that I can uh, use to continue developing the software for everything uh, since it's all hooked up and I can, I can actually test things. Um, so in terms of hardware completeness, pretty much everything is here, uh, like I said, except for the, the sound hardware. Uh, I don't think I'll be adding a whole lot else to it. Uh, I might want to look into using rechargeable batteries, um, but for now that's uh, it's pretty low on my priority list. And maybe having it like recharge over USB, but like I said, that's uh, it's an afterthought. Um, this display board will eventually need a uh, need the bottom half after these wires cut off, so that I can I can fit it in the uh, the enclosure I want to use, and also fit the controls at the bottom. Uh, this board here I will probably end up remaking completely because I just rigged this up for testing and it's not the best layout I could think of and I also uh, you know, need to make space for sound hardware and I'm not even sure of the, the design I'm going to use for that. I may end up using two uh, voltage controlled oscillators so I can have two independent square wave channels uh, or I may just go with one but I haven't really played around with that a whole lot to, uh, to make a decision yet. Um, so I'll go ahead and turn off this light and power it on so you can or so I can show you the the state of the software a bit as you can see there's a pong readout I've got a, a simple menu set up that's controllable from the wheel uh, we can select one of a number of different programs that I've got in this uh, this little list here various ones just kind of for testing like uh, this one's just kind of for testing the wheel and then I can press it different buttons um, test the input. I've got one of them wired closed because I was letting Pong run for, for days just to make sure it was stable. I just went ahead and disconnected that so I could show you the actual uh, game here in a minute. Let's see here. Um, so the graphics API, uh, as I would use in the games, is pretty pretty well complete. Um, I'll just go ahead and fire up Pong so that you can, you can see the state of this game. Uh, the system's down like it, it's far from being complete but it's to the point where things are in good enough shape that I can I can actually write games and simple demos like this um, to, to show off um, but uh, this right here is pretty much the the best demonstration of what's what's going on in it right now uh, that I have the sound driver of course because I haven't developed the hardware is non-existent um, the operating system it works pretty well. It can write to the write to the flash memory of the device. Uh, handles input well. There's still some tweaks I want to do with the input, like have a sort of event queue for for button up and button down events. Uh, right now, it only you can you can read the state of a button, but it's not like uh, not like the kind of API you would have in a uh, a on a PC where you would use to develop games for just like if I press this button this only happens once until I release the button and so on. Um, and the uh, the game API is is making progress. I um, sort of have a plan to develop that as I develop games and just sort of build it out of functions that I find I need and are in common with the rest of the game so I don't end up you know rewriting functions that are uh, 
that would be duplicated in multiple games and can be sort of made general purpose. Um, so I'll, uh, I'll pause for a second and go hop over to my computer to show some other stuff. So now I've got this uh, hooked up to my computer via USB, you can see here. Um, it's not powered by the, uh, the batteries right now. Because uh, I wanted to show the, the console output, I'll just start this, uh, this scrolling text demo that I have here. Um, so there, there is a, a serial sort of console interface that I've got uh, written in right now, and it's useful for outputting debug information. Uh, like right now I've got just some profiler data, it sort of shows the, the cycles per second is basically the operating system's frame per second or game, however you want to think about it. Um, cause the, in, at the end of the day, the, the whole thing is just a big giant loop with a bunch of subsystems. Uh, tells the, the number of microseconds, um, or, yeah, microseconds spent in in each of the different subsystems. So we can see that the uh, the game time is about, it's averaging around 5 milliseconds per frame, uh, which isn't too bad. Um, these, these scrolling or well not even the scrolling part it's just the drawing of the characters is what really eats up some CPU time because if I uh, if I pop over to Pong and let that run um, you'll see that the frames per second is is way higher because it doesn't take a whole lot of, of horsepower to draw some lines in a single pixel bouncing around um, eventually I want this uh, this console to be able to take commands so I can I can edit you know settings on the device on the fly like for uh, just power saving features or processor clock speed or different different game parameters and clear uh, maybe clear saved in settings and just all sorts of different things um, and uh, in in going along with that I would like to have a sort of uh, API to where you can write a program on your PC and say Python and pipe out some data and have it draw on the the Timo's display so so that I could use it as like an external CPU um, CPU load graph display sort of thing or display some like game data if I'm playing an FPS have it show my health and my ammo or something like that um, but yeah that's pretty much all there is to show right now um, in terms of when it might be done, I can't really say. It's probably going to be a while because I'm the only person working on it and I don't have all the time in the world. So if anyone wants to uh, come along and contribute some uh, some code, that'd be super cool. Though I know it would be kind of difficult because there's only one of these around. So it's uh, kind of hard to test on the hardware. But in any case, uh, that's Timo right now and I hope you'll stay tuned to see more of it in the future.